A lot of people see uh, lowriders going down the street, low to the ground, scraping hydraulics, and they think that you have to be a gang member, you have to be part of, of the wrong crowd, and that's not true at all. I have a lot of friends who uh, have lowriders. It's a hobby, and it's a hobby that everybody has to have. Some people play golf, some people play basketball. I pull my car out, wipe it down, and go for a cruise. My name is Rudy Peter Campos, Jr. Uh, my car is a 1946 Chevy Fleetmaster. The unique thing about the 1946 Chevy is the hood emblem uh, right above the bow tie, the Chevrolet bow tie, and it's actually shaped like a V, uh, which stands for victory. And on the hood, there's a what's called a flying goddess or a flying lady, which also makes it unique for that year. You could tell the difference between a 46, a 47, and a 48 based on the grill. It has like a mustache-shaped grill. My car originally comes with a 216 engine. My dad had it changed to a 235, and it's a floor shifter, which is unique to this car because it comes out from a 1950 Chevy. I want to go with a different look, so I added a 1957 a Cadillac hubcaps along with changing out the headlight visas from a 1953 Cadillac. The interior is a tan in color. My father had it done, um, and it's the same interior from 1982. When I did the restoration, I made sure that we wouldn't change that, uh, just to keep it as a memory, memory for my father. When I was four years old, my father was killed. Um, he was murdered in gang violence. So early on, I had to take the role of of being a, the head of the household. It was a role that I had to step up to, and for many years, my mom had the option to sell that car and get rid of it and make ends meet. She chose not to sell it and to keep it uh, for me. The incentive was to graduate from high school. She always told me if I would graduate, the car was mine, so I graduated. And that car stayed with me, uh, which is the same incentive I've given my, my son. If he graduates, the, the car would be his. The car sat in storage at my house for a couple years. One day I had the itch to, hey, let's get this car back out on the road again. I pulled it out of the garage and we took off for a cruise. Let's go, let's go down Whittier Boulevard. Let's go eat down uh, at Tommy's. Uh, car started up, no problem. We start heading down toward Tommy's and a fan blade breaks on the engine. Um, and that was the beginning of what they say, opening a can of worms. I started to seek out people. It turned out to be the worst thing I could have ever did. The painter came to the house, picked up the car, told me it would be a couple of weeks, and it would be in a couple of months. Uh, went to check on my car one day, he was gone. He got in a plane and he went back to Korea. I mean, my car was a shell when I got it back. The members from my club stepped up. One phone call was made, and within 30 days, the car was fully restored back to uh, the way it looked before. That's what a car club to me was, you know, making a phone call and saying, hey, I need help, and with, without, again, without hesitation, then putting all their work aside and, and taking my car in. My car club is Bridgetown Oldies from La Puente in the San Gabriel Valley. When I first joined the club, I was 17 years old, and I came home with a plaque, and I thought the plaque looked cool. Silver plaque, never seen a silver plaque. Everybody had gold plaques, and when I showed up with that plaque, it was World War III in my house. I got thrown out of my house, and I thought that was gonna be the end of it. My mom was, was really upset. And I think she was upset because not knowing, first off, who the members of the club were, um, she had protected me and my sister for so long. But at the end of the day, when they put my car back together in 30 days, and she saw what they did, it opened up her eyes to who they truly were. And she cried for days. She appreciated what they did, and I appreciated what they did. They really, really stepped up and helped us out. So it's a tradition with our club that uh, prior to going to an event, we make it a habit to go through Old Town La Puente and cruise through there before we meet on Third Street before taking off um, to let people know that, hey, you know, the, the cars are coming through. We're a small car club, about 20 members. We're not about numbers. We're about, about family, friends, the quality. Being part of the car club for over 20 years, it's never changed. It's, it's not, 
what people think it is. It's a brotherhood. Low riding is not for everybody. And I know that firsthand, especially when I first met my wife. First thing I said, realize was, or figure out is if she even liked to be in my car. And when my wife accepted it, uh, I knew that she was the one for me. And, and to this day, we get in the car and we go you know, for a cruise, me and my kids. It takes a unique person, a unique couple to, to enjoy uh, low riding. When I was a kid, I always wanted to be a police officer. We used to play cops and robbers, and I was the only cop. It goes all the way back to sitting in the back of that Monte Carlo, waving at the police officers passing by. I've been a police officer for over 17 years. Started off with the Baldwin Park Police Department as a police explorer. Went through the ranks of police explorer, police cadet. Was hired as a police officer for the city of Baldwin Park, and then transferred over to the city of Irwindale in 2007, where I'm currently employed. My assignment as a police officer for the city of Irwindale is working the streets, uh, residential and commercial streets of, of Irwindale. Uh, we have about 1,400 residents in the city of Irwindale. During the, our patrol, you know, we're looking for traffic violations. We're responding to emergency calls for service, in progress calls. Uh, we assist our local agencies. What scares me the most is knowing that when I leave home, there's a possibility that I'm not going to come home. Um, and that's what I keep in the back of my mind. My ultimate goal on a daily basis is to make sure I make it back home to my family. Luckily, my wife's in law enforcement, so she knows what I go through. Uh, but it's very challenging for any police officer. You know, you're never home. Uh, you work odd hours. And you try to balance that with, you know, kids' sports, kids' school, and having a hobby helps you relieve that stress. As a police officer, uh, we're stereotyped as being racist. People think that we're not, we're not human, we're not approachable. Realizing how, where I came from, the way I was raised, what happened to my father, has, has led me to become a better police officer. I enjoy helping out the youth, and being with, with the Ball Park Police Explorer program, I wanted to give back to the youth. The same program that I was involved in, that helped me out, um, I wanted to help out. And, and seeing those kids go through the program, mentoring them as a mentor, uh, and then seeing them go through an academy and eventually becoming police officers, that's, that's the biggest uh, reward that can be given back to me from them. Uh, there's a lot of stereotypes uh, with low riding. People think that you have to be belong to a gang, that you have to be a gang member, that you have to just hang out with gang members, um, that you sell drugs because you have a nice car. Uh, that is not true at all. There's a lot of professionals that love low riding um, as a hobby and especially being a police officer, you have to have something to keep your mind occupied away from work. When my fellow officers find out that I have a lowrider, uh, they have the same reaction. You know, does the administration know what you're doing? We're not doing nothing wrong. You know, it's just a love for cars, a passion for the car. You know, because again, they, they realize that you need uh, a hobby away from our job. You need to take a, a break and you need something to keep your mind occupied. We can't wrap our whole life around law enforcement. We're there to help, we're there to serve but we're also there to live a healthy life and make it to our retirement. Uh, low riding has taught me uh, dedication, responsibility, friendship, the values of having a family, and not taking uh, life for granted. I would like to thank my father. Um, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have this car. I wouldn't be here today. And I think at the end of the day, things happen for a reason, and he's looking down, proud of me and my sister. Uh, my sister being a sergeant with the San Marino Police Department, uh, both of his children are in law enforcement today. My advice would be to never give up. If you have a dream, you have to go for that dream. Um, you can do anything you want to do if you put your mind to it. Also not forgetting where you came from. You cannot forget your past. There is a past. Um, and that's, that's your drive. That should be your drive to get where you got to go. My name is Rudy Campos, Jr. I'm a police officer and I'm a lowrider role model.